Miami than in Cleveland. They just looked like his moves were smoother. As far as going to the rim, he didn't seem like he was like, he definitely tries to bully people more. Just from what I've seen in 2013, 2014, it's really interesting to look back on. And then Shaq flying up and down the court. Um, and young Kobe, like they were just overwhelming athletically. Like I could get into more of this, but it's funny to me how those teams were constructed with Shaq and Kobe with not much around them, but they really didn't need much. Same with like the Jordan Pippen Bulls. Wasn't much around them, but they really didn't need much just because of how the offense was constructed and how they just flew around on defense. But Yeah, when you can lock up teams offensively, you don't need more than one or more than two. Especially mm-hmm. in that era when it was the era of twos. I mean, we're getting back to that and more so now, but like a few years, it was more the eras of the big three, so you needed more than just two players to go win. But back then, I mean, other than Lakers and Celtics in their time, they were just stacked from top to bottom, but it really kind of mm-hmm. got into that one superstar, one star, and then you kind of just match from there and Pippen was better than any secondary player, and Mike was the best player in the league. So mm-hmm. yeah, they were still able to like, take over. There was other teams that were more balanced out, yeah, than the Bulls and Lakers. So that was, I don't know, it was re- it's a lot like how the Patriots kind of do it with Brady, where it's like we got Tom Brady, we don't need the best receivers, we can win with that, which they've proven. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a good segue into Tom Brady, which we will know where Tom Brady's playing by. For sure, 4 o'clock Wednesday, but I think by midnight tomorrow, we'll know where Tom Brady's playing. Um, The market right now, officially, according to the NFL sources, is the Patriots, of course. The Buccaneers being the main suitor, besides the Patriots, and then the Chargers. Chargers. Um, There's no way, if Tom was going to go to the Chargers, he would have already been there. Because, why not? It's LA, and they've got a far better receiving crew they got better offensive weapons than the Patriots have already and then LA on top of that if Tom Brady yeah he'd already be there if he wanted to be there so to me it's really a Patriots Bucks race and uh you know it's more of what we said previously Patriots are gonna wait see what offers he gets you know they're not gonna outbid themselves so they're gonna see what the market is whatever the Bucks offer him and then kind of go from there i think brady was expecting we know brady's expecting a bigger market and really it came down down to three teams what do you think i still think the chargers are very big in play Uh, um i think they're kind of moving i think they move pieces around like a little bit i mean they moved russell okung who has a bigger contract around i like obviously they signed austin eckler back franchise hunter henry so they're basically shoring up that brady has all of his weapons and will have a line so i think the chargers are still very much in play because i don't know what else they would do at quarterback if not i don't think they want to run it back with someone like andy or run it with someone like andy dalton of that sort so i think they're i still think they're very much in play we'll obviously we'll know if he's going to New England or not when if they're going to sign him or not sign him because it'd be dumb to sign him on Wednesday at or after but yeah when they take the 13 million dollar cap yeah it'd be sure. absolutely dumb they won't do they that they won't do that they're, they're not stupid and so it'll be interesting to see i think i don't i don't even mm. If I was to say right now, I would think the Patriots makes the most sense for Brady. And I hope that the Patriots makes the most sense for the Patriots. To me, it does, but yeah. hopefully it does. And if not, I mean, then you could see maybe a Bucks kind of almost trade but not trade. And Jameis going to New England and Tom Brady going to Tampa. But Yeah, I don't know if we'd get Jameis out of that. We've been linked most to Andy Dalton, which, I would, which would be fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. I was, but, I've seen things about Jameis as well. That's why I say that. Yeah, I've seen no official reports about that. I would, like, I, you know, if we're going to get rid of Tom Brady, I would take just about anybody besides Andy Dalton, probably. I would take... I'd prefer for them to try to make a move for Cam Newton, but... Right. Yeah, no one really knows what's going on there. As far as it... I've heard Carolina wants him back. I've read that. Um, but I also haven't seen much about it, which is weird, so... Because he's not a free agent, is he? No, he has nah. one more deal so, in one year. So they'd have to cut him. So if he's he's probably coming back there. Mm. They were thinking about maybe trading him because his... And people are open to 
and new ownership. In the market because his contract for now is not really a big contract. So mm-hmm. he's a movable player. And they didn't sign Greg Olson back, which is also interesting to me. The Seahawks got a Greg Olson. Mm-hmm. So Cam's favorite target is a gone. So, I mean, not that that's like the end-all be-all, but I just found that a little interesting that they didn't bring him back. For sure. Back to Brady, though. Brady, I just cannot see him going to the Bucks. And another report came out was that Brady's not going to leave just to leave kind of thing, like not to spite anybody. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's funny to me because this is going just how every free agent deal with the Patriots goes. Like, for instance, they signed both McCourty twins Sunday. Did you hear anything about anything leading up to the signing of them on Sunday? No. No, which you never do. You never hear anything about anything related to the Patriots and free agency. You just know that either they end up leaving or they end up staying, usually. And uh, with Tom, it's just it's different with him being there for 20 years, being who he is, Tom Brady first free agency somehow um so i can't it's hard for me to see him choosing the bucks over that but he would possibly get you know more money better area to live or nicer area to live tampa nicer than new england meaning weather wise weather wise but i mean i can't picture giselle wanting to move from you know a boston neighborhood or wherever they live to or Connecticut now, where, allegedly, where they might live, to Tampa. I don't see Tampa as a bad place. I don't know. I just don't see that being uh, where a supermodel might live. But, you know, with Tommy, who 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 knows? I, I think he ends up in New England. Buccaneers wouldn't be... You know what I mean? If it was, like, the 49ers, which would have been his first choice, allegedly, yeah. or, like, a Cowboys, then that makes sense. But the Bucks. The Chargers with no fans. It is L.A. That's why I think he would have already signed there. Kind of like if the Niners were in play, he would have already been there. You know what I mean? I Well, I think that he wouldn't sign there. I, well, he wants to be in New England. Right. But I think the reason why I still think the Chargers are in play is because he was going to wait until he knows exactly what he wants to do in New England, which is why he wouldn't. And he knows how they operate. They're going to operate last minute because they want to see what everyone else does, so they know where to, where they want, like where their price line is for him. And pretty much after that, if, you, if teams are offering him more, they're going to stop wherever they stop. But so I still think the Chargers are in play, and they haven't really made any big moves to indicate that they weren't going to go, that they are not making room for Tom. Because the Chargers make the most sense to me if it's not New England. Yeah, they definitely make more sense to the Bucks, even though the Bucks do have the Bucks have Bucks more weapons, up comp, more up and coming. They kept, get the better coach, so kept, that's that's especially why Brady's not going to leave Belichick for Anthony Lynn and and a stadium of no fans. That's just I can't picture that for two seconds. You could bring fans, nah. <laughs> Chargers, Chargers are straight up have no fans, especially in L.A., especially with a new stadium. Um, I don't. You know, it'd be one thing if Brady wasn't the most hated quarterback before this. You know what I mean? He'd bring some fans, but I mean, that's not... He's not going to bring a fan base. It would be interesting. I think he could bring... I think he could bring interest to the Chargers. I do, but... I think that... I mean, I think the Patriots is a place he should be, but I do think he can bring interest to the Chargers. I think that makes sense. So moving forward with this podcast in the coming episodes, being that we have no NBA, no sports for three months, and this primarily being an NBA podcast, we want, we're probably going to open up some debates, some common debates that hoop fans definitely have with each other, you know, whether it be having to do with dunks, whether it have to do with handles, whether it has to do with teams, play, you'll see. If you're a hoops head, you're going to want to tune into these episodes and we're going to love your input on these episodes. Give us some ideas of what you want to hear us debate. Um, we get to add to that, Keenan. It's going to be a lot of different things to bring up. I mean, 
there's going to be there's so many topics in the NBA and throughout sports that are debated debated that you don't hear on your common shows every day, and we want to bring those type of conversations up and because no one talks about them. True hoop head conversations is what we want. We want we want a lot more interaction from y'all. So I'm excited for it. Y'all should be excited for it. Be a lot of hoops content in the coming months with this uh with this shutdown. I want everybody, as I mentioned before, obviously in this complete shutdown damn near of the US, just stay safe out there, wash your hands, brush your teeth, brush your teeth. <laughs> All that, all that good stuff. Just stay clean, stay healthy. Because it's wild out there. Um, you got anything else to add? No. That's a nice little short mini episode. We'll be back tomorrow probably with an update on Tom Brady if there is one. Um, if not, definitely Wednesday you'll hear from us. That's all we have for you today. Warner Brothers, we're signing off. We will see you soon. Oh, very cool. The Warner Brothers, Keenan and Kyle Warner. Thanks, Wayne. Wayne's sons. Great stuff. They were on the show yesterday talking about the Warner Brothers, the new podcast Keenan was with uh, Wayne and myself. So I thought I'd replay it. We're going to feature him, feature the boys, feature everybody. You know, give me some new sports. I love the perspective. And by the way, guys, it's the Bucks. He went to the Bucks, so not the Milwaukee Bucks. And, uh, yeah, he's going to bring some fan base. He's got to down in the Tampa. You know, they need some love down there. Bring it big. But when we play, we'll find out again. So I love to hear the perspective of the new school from the old school because I'm old. So God bless. Speaking of that, God bless the children, Wayne Warner, Taylor Swift, and the Nashville All-Star Choir with Keenan and, again, Kyle Warner. Thanks, guys. The Warner Brothers Podcast. Brothers is in B-R-O-T-H-A-S. Warner Brothers. <laughs> Umagu out. Thank you, peace. Somewhere out there He sits all alone Waiting again tonight For mommy to come home She says she has bills to pay That he's only in her way Listen close Can't you hear him crying? I need Someone who needs me I need someone who loves me Somewhere out there There's a little Say she fell again. Listen close, can't you hear her cry?